So when you get your kit, um, you don't get any sort of paper ins um, instructions. So have a look at the um, installation um, PDF, which is available online. You can get this on your mobile phone or an iPad, uh, which I did for throughout my installation. I kept referring back to this. Um, as with anything from ALB, very, very clear and concise information um, and how they want things set up. It really, really does help help throughout the whole installation process is having something like this on hand so you can refer back to it um, where you need to um, especially for where all the little cables uh, need to be connected to um, because they are um, item specific on where they need to be going so it goes through the entire installation process from installing the control box uh, various locations to the a pillar mounts and the the cable um, connections into the actual control box there so definitely have a look at that um, for either iPad or mobile phone okay first things first let's have a look what's in the box so we know what we're dealing with so decent box Alrighty. so just a general quick start guide from, uh, from the uh, the actual display itself uh, some warranty information Okay, so you actually have your, your touchscreen there, you've got your gimbal mount. So we'll just have a look at all this. Let's drop that back in there. Okay, touchscreen, we'll, we'll have a look at that in a second. So you've got your gimbal mount, this is where the actual touchscreen um, connects to. This will be um, mounted in your vehicle, near your, near your dash. So obviously it swivels, which is quite nice. So you can get it into the right orientation that you need to. Um, stainless steel construction. Uh, magnet, magnets, again, really, really nice. Um, so we'll have a look at that in closer detail. Then you've got your, your basically your control box. Okay. Um, now this is where all the wiring gets connected to, um, and this is, controls all your uh, accessories. All right. So look at that. It's nice and simple. So you've got two entries on your control box as well that side and that side. That'll be a more apparent a bit later. Okay, so further in the box itself, now we've got a USB cable. Um, this is connects the actual touch screen um, to your control box. Again, this is quite an important thing. Um, I'm going to touch on this in a second. And then you've got a, um, a range of wiring and some connectors in here and that's all for the box itself so we'll put that aside that out of the way okay so you've got a little connector kit here a uh, Lynx terminal kit you've got a govy power this is the basically the power harness to the control panel um, so that's one thing we need to power up is the control panel now this is your all the controller wiring as well so these will connect into those little pins and these will go to the relevant accessories that you connect up to your, your control panel. Um, so again, that will come more apparent. Now this one I believe is for your air compressor. So this will connect into your air compressor and then uh, be linked into the control box so we can uh, remotely control the air compressor. Um, again, pretty cool. Okay, so, um, actual touch screen, let's have a look at this. Let's have a look. Okay, it looks like you just slide it out here. As you can see there's sort of um, magnetized. We'll get some close-ups in a second. You actually have a camera on this as well, which is quite interesting. So I've not p played with this yet. Um, this is only the first time I've unboxed this. Um, looks pretty decent. I believe this is an Android phone, so everything is controlled on here. And you could various other items such as GPS, but we'll, we'll have a look at the functionality later in the video. More, uh, let's focus on the installation and get this installed in the truck. Okay, so we'll keep this in here, safe and sound for now. Just chuck that back in the box. Gosh, why is it always so hard to put things back in a box? Okay, so now, now that you've got all your, your gear and the control box, this is, this is what you can expect from actually getting the, the Lynx control kit itself. So that's all you get in the kit, nothing else. So what you will need to get is a, uh, a, a pillar bracket. Now just make sure what vehicle um, uh, you've got. Make sure what vehicle you've got. Take two. So the A pillar bracket, just make sure 
uh, you get the right A pillar bracket for your vehicle. So there's uh, several different kits. Uh, for the Ford Ranger, it is the Kit 3, which is specifically made for your Ford Ranger. And there's, like I said, several different kits. Uh, this basically locates your your gimbal um, by the driver's uh, side, and basically that gets connected onto there and get mounted basically in a fixed position, which is quite cool. Right. So, uh, if you have any other accessories, such as the pressure control uh, module or uh, pressure control kit, um, you will need the pressure control system for the Lynx system. Um, I find it slightly puzzling, but we'll have a look and see what this means. Um, because in a previous video, we installed the pressure control kit, which is Bluetooth controllable um, on your mobile phone, which is great. Um, now this links into your link system um, so when you get this kit you'll get all the relevant items in your pressure control kit so you're basically doubling up on stuff and i think the only thing you really after is the wiring loom that will connect into your uh, your link system and i think this is the one here so prv and solenoid pad okay so this is what you're after, it's just the, the wiring looms that will connect in this, but we'll have a look at that um, a bit later. Um, what we want to do is first plan where we're going to put all the stuff, which is quite critical. Um, so obviously you only have a limited amount of cable, so it is quite critical where you locate your control box. Um, and that'll dictate obviously cable lengths, if you need to extend any cables, such as your, your the power for your control box, um, any sort of cables that connect to your accessories, so those are all the things that you need to think about when looking into something like this. Um, it's not exactly the, the easiest plug and play system, it is um, slightly more complex um, in terms of obviously the wiring and all the things that are, to make it all work seamlessly, there's quite a lot of wiring involved um, in getting all the wires basically extended and into this control box so just bear that in mind so let's have a look at what tools we're going to need for the job right tools for the job um hopefully you guys are sitting down you ready for this okay some connectors make sure you get yourself a decent pair of crimping tools and wire strippers you're going to need those um, connectors um heat shrink and your heat gun, uh, or a little Dremel sort of versa tip, that's what I use for my heat gun. Really, really handy, nice and portable, works off gas. You're going to need a drill um, and a 4.5mm drill bit. Now that will uh, come into play when we do the A pillar bracket. It's the only reason why you need the drill, which is quite cool because I really don't like drilling into my vehicle. Okay. Now, one thing that you'll find um, when you get your link system. The actual control cable, the USB cable that actually powers and charges the unit um, is only two meters long. So now you can imagine the USB cable will connect into that and then needs to run up to your control unit or the actual display itself. So you've only got two meters um, where this needs to be situated. So now I particularly want to situate it somewhere else, somewhere more easily accessible because these are meant to go into the inside of the vehicle. They can't sit in the engine bay, uh, which is unfortunate. So a lot of our wiring goes over there, which, which would be quite nice, uh, quite handy because I really have a control unit there and it would just make things so much easier. Um, unfortunately, that's not the case. So I have found a place, and I'll show you that in a second and why I've chosen the place. Um, but that means that that is not long enough. So most new vehicles do have USB ports somewhere along the dash. So you can still use this and still power up the unit, um, your display unit, but you won't have um, the connection straight to the control panel, which I'd like to do, and I'd like to maintain that as much as I can. So if you can't connect this to your control unit, you can still connect to this unit via Bluetooth on the display. So um, there are obviously a lot of things that are on the, in the vehicle, such as Bluetooth and things like that. So I don't really want to go around um, having connectivity issues and all that kind of stuff. So I really want to get this thing connected. So I have bought an extension, a USB extension cable. Um, that will extend it another two meters up, but four meters in length. So I will show you my location and this will basically get the USB cable to where we want to go. Right, now to the rest of the tools. 
Okay, some form of draw um, wire that would be quite handy, especially if you're drawing cables, depending on your location um, of your control box. If you're drawing more wire, very, very handy to have. Um, some extra wiring. Make sure that if you are extending your cable, um, you always go up and gauge so you can um, carry that voltage and you don't have a lot of voltage drop, um, which is quite critical. And then, so I've got a couple of rolls here, that's mainly for the power. Um, I've really, I've gone up and gauge, so I will be extending the power cables. And this is for the rest of the accessories. Um, and if you need to, you can have conduit and things like that. So, I have a big bag of conduit and ex electrical accessories that I'll probably be relying on later when we start running the cables. But mainly for now, um, is rely on, or have a look at locations on where the control box is going to be situated. That is going to dictate your length of your cables, the roots of your cables, and all that kind of stuff. So let's have a look at the locations. Right, location is everything uh, with this control panel. Um, there are various areas you can mount the control panel. You, it is recommended, or it's highly recommended, that you mount it inside the vehicle so it's waterproof, it's protected, because this is not a waterproof box. So unfortunately, it cannot live in the engine bay. So have a look for an area, for my particular installation, behind the back seats. So, Ford Ranger, seats come down, and as you can, most pickups, or utes, wherever you are in the world, has quite a usable space behind the seat. So, um, particular location I've chosen, this comes into play with the USB cable now. So, that extra cable, when I mount this on the back seats, I'm gonna need that extra length of cable that runs along the driver's side and it will connect into the box. So I can maintain the connectivity um, throughout, obviously, the use or the life of this actual product. So, um, if you have a look on the, the rear carpet, uh, or the rear mounting area for your seats. Um, you've got obviously your, your spare bits and pieces. Have a look um, for the plastic tabs that hold down your carpet. Now you can utilize those holes um, for the actual DIN rail on your control box, which is um, again, very, very handy, less drilling. Um, it just means it's a nice little location for your control box. Um, so I'm gonna be utilizing one of those holes. These DIN rails, is, as well, which is quite a nice little feature. They are removable, so you can unclip the DIN rail um, from the actual control bo box or vice versa. So if you do need to get access to this to for future uh, maintenance or connecting new wires, you can do so quite easily by just connecting, um, pulling it off the DIN rail. Um, so that clips you on nice and easily. Okay, so it's gonna basically live there. Um, I want access to this as quickly as possible, so this is probably the best location for myself. Um, and then you've got the two points where the actual cables can enter this control box. So I'll have the USB coming in from one side, and then I'll have all the power going out the other way, um, going down sort of basically the passion side of the vehicle. That's where most of the uh, the power is, is run to, because it's, it's basically the easiest route through the firewall and to the cranking battery, because this can also monitor your cranking battery. So that's the location we've chosen for this. So let's get this mounted, um, and then we'll move on to the front display and get that mounted as well. Okay, looks like we've got the control box securely mounted there. We've got the DIN rail, utilized one of the actual um, bolts that holds the carpet in place. Again, that clips on and off. So we'll just test that theory there. Basically nice and secure, out of the way, and protected as well. Uh, and then we've got our cable run, which is gonna be the, the power and the USB on the left hand side. Um, so I'll show you what I've done to remove obviously some of the uh, plastic trim and uh, some of the rubber uh, door seals that'll help you. But for now, at least that DIN rail is uh, secured. So this can be just left off and then uh, we can just mount all our cables in here um, when we need to. So that's, Problem one num number one solved, and we'll go on to the USB cable next and get that run. Okay, the next stage, apologies about the extreme close up. Um, the next stage is to find the location for your bracket that hold your gimbal in place. So, if you notice, there's an angle here, and that will match the angle of your bodywork, um, and it won't clash with this sort of um, A pillar uh, fixture here. So, what you want to look at is sliding that in just to find out where you want your your screen and everything to go. However, 
the best way to do this is if you mount your gimbal to your bracket and just kind of mock it up and then attach the, 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 the actual phone to your, your gimbal and then you can see where the items clash, where the um, where your um, switch control, uh, the link system, where it touches your dash, top your dash, and where the any of the parts of the gimbal touch basically your, your speaker here. What you'll notice with the gimbal as well, you've got three different slots, um, and then you've got two slots on the actual bracket itself. What I've found with this particular bracket is that these two are the best usable, so the outermost fixtures there are the best usable ones for, for my particular build for the Ranger. Um, if you use the, the inner ones, from what I can see from the offset is that those two holes there on the inside are too close to that. So if you put any um, bolts in there, it will, I mean, to be fair, these are quite flat. They're not too bad. Um, they will push up on that ever so slightly, so just bear that in mind. Um, so I'm going to use the outermost ones, which are going to be the easiest ones for me to um, slide into. So we'll just get the outer one there. This can all get disassembled, by the way. Um, get your little flange nuts onto your little bolts. Okay, slide that one up, and we can get the next one in. There we go, it's a little bit fiddly with your hands. This is just a mock-up, by the way. Okay, so it doesn't have to be super tight. Okay, your gimbal's nice and loose, so we'll just tighten that up with the uh, locking nut on the side there, so it's nice and stiff. Now you can get your, your control panel, um, and you can basically, it's as you can see there, you've got, it's all magnetized, so you can get that um, mounted. Okay, so now this is probably the best way to do this, is once this is in this position, we can actually have a look at, excuse me, I'm just loosen it ever so slightly, yeah, it's better. Right, now you can see where your clashing points are, so that's not a bad spot there, just bear in mind we don't want to clash with the, um, obviously the view the drive so I'm trying to go as down as far as possible so I've actually selected a point which is quite low down about here um, and it doesn't affect my view with my mirror or my windscreen which is probably the best thing so it's actually just above the, the actual speaker there that's probably the best spot I found the only thing I found that was really tricky with this spot here is drilling the holes very very tricky so if you can get a 90 degree um, drill um, either we're using a Dremel or something like that, that's probably your best bet. And then just take your time going through there because you've got three layers of bodywork there, so uh, take your time. Otherwise, you get four and a half mil drill, but you'll be drilling at an angle. It's obviously not ideal. So um, let's get this mounted and I'll, I'll show you what it looks like when it's mounted. Right, now that it's all mounted, um, everything's there. There's no clashing points. Basically, this can be adjusted. The door closes, it doesn't clash with the, the speaker, which is pretty good. Um, what you want to do is when you come to put your pinch weld back on you just got to make sure this little section of pinch weld there you got to cut that out um, basically otherwise it clashes with the bracket over there so once you've measured that obviously your depending on what vehicle it is be nice and snug going back in there and basically what you can do as well you can sneak your USB cable just in the side there and there's a nice little gap between the body and the actual uh, vehicle trim. You can sneak that down the, the little gap there. Um, and that keeps everything nice and snug and in place, which is pretty good. Nice and neat, um, all the way down. So basically the, the USB cable runs all the way down behind this trim, um, and then basically it follows the body line all the way through, it goes all the way back. And it comes out this side here. So what I've done with the actual USB connection, um, the extensions of uh, when I put the t extension together, I've heat shrunk the actual two connections together. So there's no way of that either getting pulled apart. So which is pretty good. So this just needs to be tucked away. We're going to work on tucking this away, and then we're just testing the power on the controller. This one thing that you need to do is once you've got power, 
and the USB, just check everything works, everything switches on. The last thing you want to do is obviously get this expensive bit of kit and the thing doesn't work. So double check that that it's all good. So we've got power, so we're golden. So now we're going to work on all the inputs, get everything wired up to the compressor, the pressure control system, and the various other accessories we have here. So this should be start filling up pretty damn quick and we can start uh, controlling everything on the fly. So let's get that done and I'll update you on the next stage. Okay, so the next thing we're looking at is the compressor, how to tie that in along with the pressure control system. So if you have the Bluetooth pressure control system, unfortunately that Bluetooth uh, module becomes null and void now. Um, so you'll need to get the, um, to integrate that into your link system, you'll need to get the new kit. Basically it's just a, it's a brand new harness. Um, they do give you, you know, the PRVs and the little manifold, which is uh, basically spares really. Um, if you can just get the harness, that would be great. Um, for the PRV, um, there's the uh, numbers there. You should have a look on their their website. I'll put all this information in the in the video description, just so that you guys can have a look at all that stuff. So there's no point buying an entire kit if you just need a couple of the wiring harnesses and all that kind of stuff. So, um, so what we're going to do is take out the wiring harness for the Bluetooth module now, and we'll replace that with a new Link System harness. Get that running put that into the actual control box and we'll start looking at items further in the vehicle but for now we're just focusing on the, the compressor if there are any other accessories that you're interested in i'll put annotations in the video um, on where and what accessories I, I'll, I'll be connecting up to so if you want to skip to that just skip right ahead so but for now um, we need to get all this opened up and uh, get all the wiring pulled back um, and replace the wiring Okay, just touching base on the cable uh, routes that we did. So behind the seats, control panel mounted there, nice and secure. I've run a conduit, basically it's housing all the control cables um, and the power cables going down one direction of the truck. Just makes things very, very simple. And I know where all the wiring, especially the control wiring, where that all goes to all the accessories. Um, and then the only cable that's coming down sort of the driver's side is the USB um, cable, uh, which we touched on earlier. So again, very, very easy just to clip off and gain access to the actual control panel and then clip back on. Again, simple process. It just keeps everything nice and neat, tucked away. Um, and it just, uh, obviously you don't have a plethora of cables um, strewn everywhere. So it's nice and neat this way. Um, this is the, what I've basically done with my vehicle. If you have any sort of suggestions or comments, just let me know down below what you guys have done. That'll be quite interesting to, to see. Um, but in, t in terms of overall wiring and how that's sort of run from the back of the, the, the tub, because I've got the compress in the back. Um, that was kind of tricky, so I've got a, a cable entry at the bottom of the tub next to the the, um, the drawers. So I, I basically used that route and brought all that cable through in a one and brought that into the truck. So that was probably one of the hardest things to do. Um, it took the, the longest, is getting all those cables and the control cables from the compressor and the uh, pressure control kit from the tub in here that was the hardest bit so um, make sure you just double check your, your cable lengths um, things like that there's definitely something that um, I kind of messed up a couple times is not getting the right lens I had to pull all the cables back again and then start over so try and get that done as much as you can hopefully use the information in this video as much as you can and help you through your process but um, so far this is pretty good I'm very very happy with how it's turned out um, nice and neat again very very easy to access and if you need to get to any of these little control um, cables it's quite easy to do so so very very simple so we'll show you the actual cable route that we used down sort of the side of the truck uh, and the tools that are used to actually pry some of the plastic up okay for the actual cable route uh, that I touched on previously like similar to the USB route all the power was put down basically the passenger side um, in terms of getting this plastic trim off you want to get yourself some interior uh, trim tools that makes um, taking these plastic trims off quite easy and it stops you from breaking any of the clips because that's uh, quite annoying when you start breaking clips and you, if you use a, a screwdriver you end up damaging all the plastic stuff and all that kind of stuff so um, have a look at these quite cheap on eBay or Amazon or you know stuff like that so and they, they, they do come in a quite a large pack um, for you know um, quite a good good price but very very easy to 
take all the stuff off. All the cables have been basically routed through here, all um, put together, cable tied, um, so it's all nice and together, so I know exactly what cable does what. It's all been marked um, all the way through to the engine bay. Okay, now connecting up your accessories, um, what that shows you in the instructions, what you're looking for on your relays is either your black or your white um, cables that function the actual relay. So what you want to do is get the control wiring and connect into those uh, relays. Uh, by no means does this control uh, system replace any of the wiring looms. Basically it just uh, ties into the wiring looms so you can remotely control um, all your accessories um, through your ALB link system. Okay, what I touched on before is the actual pressure control system. If you have the Bluetooth system, that now becomes a null and void. That needs to be removed, that wiring loom, and that gets replaced with a new ALB Lynx um, wiring loom. So if you already have this, just have a look for the wiring looms that you required for the Lynx system. I don't see a point in buying a whole kit um, just to get the wiring looms. So just have a look for the wiring looms um, if you already have this. If you don't have this kit, then obviously go and get the whole kit um, because it'll be quite useful and you still maintain control um, over all your compressor and all your abilities. So basically you're moving from your personal mobile phone over to the ALB Link system. So you can use that remotely, you can take it out of the vehicle, you can operate it inside the vehicle. Um, so you still ha remain um, maintain that functionality throughout. Um, but that's definitely a, a very important, important point to note is that this now becomes a spare if you do have this kit. So just have a look for the replacement uh, wiring looms. Functions and features, I'm just going to give you a quick run through of this. There's a lot of detail in uh, the functions and features of the AOB Link system. So you'll be greeted with a screen here, which is basically the, your, your background on the Android phone. If you just click on the menu button, it's exactly the same icons associated with an Android phone. First thing you want to do is get straight onto the settings, connect onto your Bluetooth and pair with your AOB Link system. Once you've done that, go onto the Wi-Fi, again connect up to the Wi-Fi system and then update your ALB link system as, as quick as you can. To get that updated, it just gets that thing out of the way. Once you go into your ALB link system, you'll be greeted with a slightly different screen, as your initial setup screen. And once you've done that, you can go in and tweak and um, basically add and take away any accessories that you require for your, um, your current um, vehicle. So it operates on a split screen system. So you can basically monitor two different um, accessories at any given time such as batteries, you're, you've got a whole range of accessories you've got control of as well. Um, if you need to change any of the settings, all you want to do is swipe, and then it brings you into kind of your main menu, where you've got all the accessories that you can control with the AOB Link system. So in a previous video, we mentioned about the AOB fridges, which are uh, connectable to, via Bluetooth and the AOB Link system. And here they are, you can actually add those items there. You've got items such as front and rear lockers, you've got your compressor, your switchboard, which is for all your non-ALB accessories or ALB accessories, such as obviously light bars, spotlights, um, camping lights, all those various items. You can monitor up to three batteries, uh, your speedometer, your air suspension, uh, pitch and roll, you've got a clock, you can monitor up to two fridges, um, and they've obviously upgraded the, the system, and you can actually, when you monitor the uh, zero um, dual zone fridge you can basically monitor both zones in that particular fridge and um, alter any of the temperatures which is really great um, and a recent feature is the TPMS which is your tire pressure management system they've added that not only for the vehicle but for trailer as well so if you are doing a lot of towing that's quite a good thing to look at um, and get that added if you want to monitor those tire pressures um, which is quite critical um, if you want to add any of the accessories here you've got this little square with a tick in there so you basically this is how you add any of these monitoring systems to your ALB links kind of menu on the other side so all you've got to do is make sure that it is it's highlighted it's ticked and that will add it to your your monitoring screen so obviously I don't have an ALB fridge or any lockers at the moment so I don't need any of those at the moment so if we go into uh, settings, which is another one, you can basically um, see all the connections you've, you've got there. So you've got accessory power, which is the power to your control unit. Um, you've got low beam, high beams, and reverse. That's if you are connected to any of those accessories. So if I energize, energize the low beam at the moment, which I've done there, it basically picks that up immediately. And if I energize the high beam, again, it picks that up. And then in order for it to do that, it helps 
um, you connect to the the actual lights and any accessories that you want to come on with those particular um, functions of the vehicle. Not only that, can you, you can change the units from kilometers to miles, PSI and bar. We can change the theme color at any given time. If you've got any particular choice in colors that you would like to use, any shading, which is pretty handy. Um, and then you've got your ALB, your the links update and your calibration is required. Once everything's set up, I highly recommend calibrating the vehicle so everything functions correctly, such as your obviously your uh, pitch and roll, your GPS, all that kind of stuff. Make sure it just it, it functions correctly with obviously your ALB link system. So it won't obviously operate straight out of the box. Um, okay, then I'll head back to your main screen. Now if you want to add anything to your accessory panel, um, such as your extra accessories, what you want to do is press and hold on the icon and then it'll bring up the new accessory that you'd like to connect to. So if you connect to a new accessory to your AOB Link Sims, it doesn't automatically pick it up. You've got to um, obviously let it know that you are connecting a new item to the AOB Link System. So for instance sake, we've got the spots and we've got the light bars. So if we click on the light bars at the moment, if we touch it once, it goes blue, it basically energizes the light bar um, immediately, along with the spots, same thing. So if we press and hold on that icon, it brings up a, a wide range of different items we can change, such as if we want the items to come on with the ignition, we can do so, so it'll automatically uh, come on. If we want to change it to it uh, coming uh, functioning with the low beams or the high beams, we can do that, and along with the reverse lights as well, which is quite nice. So um, there's various other functions here, such as low battery protection. You've got your courtesy lights, and then you've got the new ALB intensity solus functions. I've not gone into those. I've not. Uh, I've got those spotlights. So um, and then you can change the obviously the layout from a list to or an icon. I find the icon is slightly better to use. You can also change the icon. Press and hold. And the basic it brings all the little icons that you would like to use throughout your accessory panel, which is not again a nice, well thought out feature. So as that starts filling up, you've got six areas there, um, up to six um, accessories that you can add to the ALB link system. Um, you've got connection to your compressor, which is nice and handy. Again, so if you just press that, it'll basically make sure that the compressor is on. And if we want to operate the pressure control unit which we've got previously we can do so and basically it's got an audible alarm you've got the you've got the POVs kicking in at the moment um, and if you need to change the target pressure of any of the, the items that you're doing you can do so here which is quite again very very handy depending on what you are doing at that any given time so we can turn that off all the alarm will go off and very very easy to understand to navigate um, you've got two basically the split screen there overall um, I'm just getting to grips with it and it is very very handy it's nice to know that I can basically just take this out of the vehicle operate all the functionality from outside of the vehicle with this by basically a touch of a screen which is quite nice so overall I think it's an absolutely superb system very very well thought out and there's going to be more and more updates coming out in the near future when they start bringing out new accessories so it's definitely worthwhile thinking about um, the AB link system So thank you very much for joining me in this video and hopefully this has helped you make a decision and it basically guided you, give you the knowledge and all the stuff that I've kind of gone through with installing the ALB link system into my vehicle. Um, overall, it was a pretty simple installation. The only thing that took obviously the longest is drawing all the cables through your vehicle. So if you have a wagon, you're gonna be pretty much easy, you know, good to go. If you have a, uh, a canopy on the back uh, with items in the back and in the vehicle, it's gonna be slightly more tricky. So hopefully this video will help you and guide you in a particular way. If you have any comments, suggestions, please let me know down below. Um, and if you're new here, hopefully I've earned your subscription, so please stick around. Hope there's more content coming in the future. But for now, we'll definitely see you in the next one. Don't forget, Makina 10 at checkout at Douglas Motors, 10% off.